Thank you. Um, I think it's important to, when we talk about global voltage alternatives to, to just to note that uh, the Lacrosse County Board, when they passed their resolution, um, they were very clear that they wanted further study. They wanted clear, detailed information to be provided to Lacrosse County explaining the perceived need for the 3.5 kilovolt power line, which includes supporting objective studies and forecasts with a cost-benefit analysis, comparing the efficiency only, locally produced and distributed generation options with the high voltage option, individually and in combination. And this is not only the Cross County, but a number of the other communities that uh, passed resolutions are asking for this kind of objective study that be done before spending the money on this on 345K. No, we're gonna, we're gonna, are you, are you, are you, he's uh, part of a citizen uh, task. task. We're going to try to get this a uh, little I've been following this a little bit. Uh, I've interviewed for the CTF, you said, before the PSC, and uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Peter H. Moore, uh, Holtz from uh, ATC submitted this testimony. ATC, by the way, is an intervener in the process. Uh, and he states, after a series of field tours and a first set of public open houses, it became apparent that although not impossible, ATC would not in, would encounter significant difficulties routing the 345 line from Interstate 90 to La Crosse, north to the proposed eastern terminus of the project near Holman. This area is constrained by the Mississippi River, the La Crosse Airport on the west, and the bus to the east. The area between these constraints is heavily developed, as you all know. By the way, if you went to ATC's website, you can look at the La Crosse area maps, which are in more detail than what Joe did, showed later. Uh, or earlier. <clears throat> the area between these constraints is heavily developed. In order to identify sufficient alternative routes, ATC expanded the Badger Cooley Project study area to include an area north of La Crosse. This area provides a number of advantages, including the ability to co-locate with existing Maryland power cooperative in the north of state's power from state Wisconsin transmission lines. Fewer environmental challenges and challenges and overall less development. As part of the study area expansion, ATC identified five potential locations to connect the Badger Cooley project with routes being considered uh, in this proceeding. So, uh, and when this was, uh, testimony was released a couple of weeks ago, the vet, one of the, the uh, vice president for Darren said, if we don't get the Q1 and it goes to Arcadia, which this, this proposal would demand that they may pull out. Uh, when I first received info on this project, it showed a corridor going through County Highway, highways off of Route 53, for example, for Stevenstown and County T. Um, what are these power corridors for, and will they have the large transmission lines running through them? Well, here, here's an opportunity for me to use my map to zoom in on the area that I think is being uh, asked about. Um, I'm showing the area that I believe the question references. Um, the Hunter's Bridge Road is right here. And uh, I can tell you the route that's being studied follows an existing power line uh, along the Hunter's Bridge Road. And that, that is the, the sole route that's being studied in this area on the north-south part, south of the um, Black River. And there, there had been other routes that were studied previously, but that, that's the one that is narrowed down to now. I, I think when people talk about the county road T, there is a potential substation that um, uh, ATC wants to put at county road T and Highway 53 go east from there. And that's just one of the proposals that ATC has said about where they want to hook up with capital. It's not a CapEx you know, project because it would be where ATC looks in. But again, as uh, Mr. Nygaard just mentioned, um, ATC has said their least preferred options to take away to go east from the CapEx power line is at the Briggs Road substation in Holman and the County Road T substation. They would much prefer to hook up with the CapEx up in Ettrick or near Gillespie. 
right, then is the plan to go from a substation in Holman through La Crosse? And if so, is the route plan to go through North Woods Elementary School on County Road B? That's pretty specific. Mm -hmm. Well, again, that sounds like a, a question about the line heading to the east, and, and, we, and I can't speak for ATC. Um, what, I, what I can do is characterize it from my own experience that um, seeing them a year away from the line, they, they and we don't have any idea of the, of the roadblocks they're going to come up against in the next year. I, I know this from experience that when you study routes, all the data doesn't come out at once. So and I, don't think it's, I don't think anybody can characterize what the likely routes that ATC will end up with uh, here tonight. Um, if the project is starting in Minnesota and will benefit Minnesota, why can't all the project be constructed on the Minnesota side of the river instead of the Wisconsin side? And once again, the, the project runs from Hampton, southeast of the Twin Cities, uh, <coughs> across River and all down to the Holman area. It benefits both states. It benefits the Rochester area. It benefits the La Crosse metro area. Uh, the rural area that's served by River and Co-op, they get their energy from this. All these people, all these companies get their energy from this line. It goes into these substations, it, it, it feeds out from those substations to these, uh, to these other utilities, including co-ops like uh, Riverland. Is that, uh, that I do have to, I think it's important that I make, you know, one statement. Just in support of all the, the men and women at, at these different utilities, whether it's whether it's at Riverwind or XL Energy, you know, these people, you know, they keep your power on. Whether it's 20 below zero or 100 degrees, something goes wrong, they're up on that pole, they're out there fixing those transmission lines. I had a guy uh, in, on Friday at a public meeting that we had to the north of here, 92 years old, he came out uh, worked for Northern States Power for 33 years as a lineman and talked about you know, some of the experiences he had. So I take a little bit of offense in, in, in support of these people uh, for their slide about uh, that these power lines are unreliable as if we're not doing our job. The truth, folks, is that transmission lines, 99.6% of the time, the transmission lines are are available and working. In Wisconsin, in 2011, on NSP system, in 2011, the average person, the, the average uh, customer, was out of power due to a transmission line or a substation being out for five minutes. We all benefit from those people putting the time and effort uh, and the skills that they have to do this. So as far as on the reliability side, when Joe talks about the blackouts in 2003, 2011, a lot of that was due to the fact that the transmission system in this country has not been updated. It's been left uh, where it needed to be updated, needed to be expanded, and it was not. And those blackouts are a direct reflection of what happened there in those parts of the country. We have been able in the Midwest to keep that line, those lines and those, uh, that system operating. A lot of the band-aid approaches, this band-aid approach of upgrading smaller lines, we've done that. This line that we talked about uh, in the earlier question, to follow up further on that one, with Darylin Power, this Q1 route as Tom talked about, this line, as I told you earlier, is almost 65 years old. This line will need to be replaced. It's not, whether this CapEx line is built or not, Q1 line will be replaced. That's about a 35 to 40 million dollar investment. What we've said is if the CapEx line went where that Q1 route is, on one side of those structures would be the existing Darwin line, on the other side of the structure would be the CapEx line. We believe that's a common sense approach. It saves a lot of money. If we go a different direction, Aaron will still have to go and spend 35 to 40 million of ratepayer money to, to upgrade, uh, to replace and upgrade their line. So I think it's important to, to know that. 